Ah, so I'm really scared of opening this. So have you ever tried opening a can of Guinness in your own home? It's like it's a nightmare. I've opened a can of Guinness at work. It's, it's the scariest thing ever. It's like trying to pour it as well, especially if Irish people are watching. So did you ever see that like Facebook post from that like company in Canada? It's like, oh, happy St. Patrick's Day. And it had a picture of a Guinness that was so shitly poured it trended in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> like it was on the Irish news of like shit pint poured by bad barman in like Canada and they had to delete it, it was great. See how bad yours is. No, it's gonna be terrible. So here's the thing, so I got trained out of pour a pint of Guinness. I remember the guy got really drunk, not on Guinness oddly enough, and he told me like, all that stuff about leaving it for 14 seconds, it's all marketing, it's all bullshit. Yeah. And Irish people don't like when you tell them that, it's like, no, it makes it taste better. Anyway. I, I tried to tell someone that I knew this and they just wouldn't believe it. They yeah. were like, no, it's important. It'll taste different. You have to leave it to sell now. It's yeah. all marketing. And it's that thing about because you've been told to wait, it makes it taste nicer. But speaking of marketing, you're ready to talk about Apple. Yay. The fruit. <laughs> <laughs> there is, there's always one person. Why is it called <laughs> Granny Smith's? Pink ladies. Do you know why Apple is called Apple? Because there's a bunch of like theories about it and they're all wrong. It's the favourite fruit of Steve Jobs. It's exactly that, yeah. <laughs> is that it? Yeah, Steve Jobs. <laughs> yes. the, well, the story goes that Steve Jobs was on a fruitarian diet, which means he just ate fruit um, when Apple was founded. And fun fact about that fruitarian diet, Steve Jobs thought it meant that he didn't need to wear deodorant. Spoilers, he was wrong. And he had, <laughs> while he was working at Atari on that diet, they made him work the night shift because he literally smells of shit. Where's the connective thread? What? I, I need to eat fruit. I don't need to smell good. <laughs> it's just what he thought. I thought if he was on an all fruit diet, he wouldn't need to. Um... Smell like fruit, obviously, Brad. <laughs> Long story short, just Steve Jobs liked apples and thought the word sounded nice. And there's been a bunch of like theories after the fact trying to expand upon it. Like, oh, is it a reference to like you know, um, uh, uh, you know, Newton with the apple because the first PC was called the Newton? No. And then later when they had like you know the rainbow coming out of the apple for one of their color computers, like, oh, is that a reference to Turing, the father of computing? who like infamously committed suicide by taking a bite out of an apple laced with cyanide because he was gay? No. The reason the bite's there is because the designer said, well, if you don't put the bite in it, it look like a cherry. And that's it. Yeah. And I just love how simple it is, but people keep trying to think, well, there must be some other reason why it's an apple. It's like, no, Steve Jobs was a weirdo who liked apples. Is it the same with Bill Gates? Was his favorite fruit Microsoft? If there's one thing Apple are known for among consumers and not terminally online weirdos who make owning a phone their entire personality, it's making some incredibly fuckable looking electronics. I think we can all agree on that, yeah? Like, Apple's really good at making sexy looking bits of kit. Um, Even if you don't use it, you look at like, you know, an iPhone or like those old Macs with like the translucent plastic on them, you're like, Ooh, that's that's some aesthetic right there. Yeah, I mean, even though I, I use Samsung phones, ooh. Um, I do like Apple. Mm -hmm. I've had my own, well, actually, the only thing I've used really is a Mac in college because mm -hmm. we had to do like all like the media production stuff on a Mac. Because yeah. I always remember having getting the rainbow wheel of death. Mm -hmm. And then I've had an iPod Touch, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Brad? Just remind me never to use Carl's phone. Who I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm using a comedic tool known as hyperbole or hyperbole. Um, uh, just you know, they just make very to, sexy. To quote me, <laughs> that's how I always said it. They make very sexy pieces of kit, and every now and again, if you're on the internet, like if you're one of the aforementioned termly online weirdos, you'll see that post going around like this is peak aesthetic for electronics, and it's like you know that that era where like electronics were translucent plastic, where you could see the internals, and like you know the Apple was it like the Mac, the original Apple Mac. Where it had like you know the orange and the green yeah, all different colors, yeah, all of them. And they, they need to bring that back. Um, in regards to the look of the company's electronics, Apple is infamous for sacrificing everything from battery life to critical device functionality to make their devices look just a little bit sexier. A design ethos that can be traced back to Steve Jobs, who drowned the first iPod prototype like a mafia snitch because he didn't like the way it looked. So discuss. What? <laughs> So don't worry, I'll explain oh, everything. So he, didn't, he didn't like the way it looked. He didn't like the so way it looked, no. Basically, I like, imagine just throwing it in a bathtub. Well, yeah, that's pretty close. You're getting really good at these guesses. <laughs> I'm good at guessing. <laughs> did he bathe, did he put like concrete on the bottom of it first? Well, if you just want to get straight to the facts, I can tell you. But normally, <laughs> normally we have like, you know, five- Why do you guys never get straight to the fact? Yeah, normally we just have like five or 10 minutes of preamble and have a laugh. But if you just want me to tell you the facts, I can tell you if you want. No, tell us the fact and then we'll do the preamble. Okay. I'll stumble. Okay, well the fact is that the initial like, iPod prototype that was handed off to Steve Jobs, he was like, I don't like this. And the engineer's like, what, what don't you like, Mr. Jobs? I'm like, it's ugly, it's too big. 
and they told him, sir, we've, we've, I think the quote is, we've had to reinvent the idea of inventing to get this much technology into something this small. It cannot be smaller. And Steve Jobs went, okay. Took the iPod and went, whoop, into a nearby fish tank. So you were very close, Nietzsche. <laughs> and he told his engineers, watch. And they watched it sink to the bottom, really annoyed, obviously, because like, this is like the first one in existence an air bubble start popping out. And Steve Jobs pointed and went, there's air bubbles. I mean, there's space. If there's space, you can make it smaller. Go back, make it smaller, get rid of that space. And they did. I'm not like an expert in designing electronics and stuff, but mm. are there not situations where there needs to be air? Shut up. <laughs> and that's why the preamble is kind of important because we, I, the preamble I wrote for the fact like, kind of explains why Apple sometimes ignores that. I feel like there's going to be a new bit of like merch or design or something come out soon that's just you telling me to shut up because this has happened in a lot of videos and I'm trying to point out the complete pointlessness and inaccuracy of things. Just stop it. No, I just like that because that's what the person in charge like, shut up, <laughs> stop asking questions that make sense. And as you pointed out, Brad, sometimes stuff like that needs to exist inside of a device. And as I mentioned in the intro, Apple does not give a shit. They only care about making their devices look nice. And do you like... And you might take to be recorded <laughs> for all to see. Is it off putting being filmed by two things? It kind of is, yeah. Like, don't pull out your camera as well. <laughs> for anyone out there who's unfamiliar with Apple's philosophy of style over substance, Brad, do you remember the video we recorded a while ago about the Apple PC that had a literal 100% failure rate? No. You don't remember? Okay, so. <laughs> That, like, we've got an old Sorry. video. It, I thought you might, because you've been re-watching all the old content. I, I don't think I've got to that point just yet. I'm okay, still in so, the first year. Okay, so there was an old Apple PC. Not a PC, it's an Apple Mac in it. They don't like me to say that. That had a literal 100% failure rate because they built it without fans. And do you know what, when you said like that space well, So like, nobody liked it? <laughs> a big part of the Apple brand is that it's got loads off. of fans. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick, yeah. But like, do you know what you said, like, the iPod, the space, maybe that needs to exist. Yeah. The same is true of, like, say, fans on a computer, right? Yeah. Well, Steve Jobs didn't like the fans because they made noise, and he wanted to make an entirely silent computer. So he told the engineers to take away the fans. And Brad, why do fans exist on a computer? To remove the heat. Yeah. Like, it's to cool down the internals, because, you know, inside of a PC or a computer gets very, very hot. So what they did instead is, rather than put a, like a fan on the computer, they gave it the computing equivalent of a massive fat badonka donk and they gave it a huge aluminium um, heat sink on the base that wicked away heat and the hope was that the base would like, you know, draw the heat away and dissipate it into the surface on which the device was stored. However, that wasn't really the case and the heat would build up inside the device and all the internals would just pop out. Weird question, mm -hmm. and like genuine question as okay. well. Was Steve Jobs a genius? Yes. So he is actually a smart guy. He's, well, he's not, not like he's dead. He, well, yeah, but he's not. He's not like other famous heads of particular companies who aren't actually that clever. No, he's no. actually a smart person. Like he was legitimately a genius. Yeah. If you know, and this all sounds really dumb, but I'm going somewhere with it. But for anyone curious about how that story ends. Um, Apple literally had to issue a like statement to people who bought that computer saying, yeah, if your computer starts working, pick it up and drop it on the floor. Because that would cause all the internals that had popped out to pop back into place. And let's just all take a moment to appreciate that there was one time where Apple told people to drop its device on the floor. <laughs> and that's the thing of like, anyone who owns an Apple pod, it's like, I wouldn't even let that, thing, like, like, it gets a crack on the screen when you look at a hard concrete surface. <laughs> and Apple was telling you to drop that like computer onto the floor. And then, speaking of phones, remember a couple of years ago, Apple released a phone that couldn't make phone calls? <laughs> remember that one? Vaguely, yeah. yeah. Was yeah. that the one where your hand the covered up the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was like they, they were holding yeah, a weird angle yes. to talk. Yes, it yeah. was the Apple phone. Again, people will be wondering, wait, how did Apple make a phone that couldn't make phone calls? Well, I have an iPhone here, look at me. Oh, it's there. <laughs> like, Actually, I keep recording this. Now I'm panicking. I'm panicking Sky. Okay, there we go. I did. If anyone wondering, how in the hell did Apple make a phone that couldn't make phone calls? Um, the, the way I've seen it explained is, is the antenna was on this part of the phone, or like this part here. So when you held it like this and held it to your ear, your, the heel of your palm would cover up where the antenna was. Consumer Reports engineers 
have confirmed that iPhone 4 has an antenna problem. And it's right here. You know, I think, well, how did that make it through testing? The rumored reason why is that everyone in Apple talks on their phone like an asshole, aka yeah. like this. Like on, on The Apprentice. Like on The Apprentice, yeah, <laughs> with speakerphone on. And as a result, oh they never anticipated that anyone would hold it like a phone and talk on it like a phone. So they put the antenna here because everyone who used it internally held it like this. Had to settle on £26 per person. That's not. Wow, that's quite expensive, isn't it? It is. Ak Akeem, could you have gone any harder with nuggets? No. Oh, it's not what I was expecting. No. The only time I've ever seen someone hold a phone like that is on The Apprentice, not yeah. in real life. Or on a train. Or in Apple's or HQ. Maybe. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Three places. <laughs> it just can't be true. Like, there must be another reason. Well, I cannot believe that a company full of smart people who build electronic devices would be so fucking stupid to be like, no one's going to hold this phone like a phone. What's when you're part of like, you know, the culture inside, you know, you don't see outside of it. That's why you have stories like black people not being able to use facial recognition technology because no one inside the company's making it is black or they don't get black people to test it, which is why they don't work. Study after study, including a federal government report last year, has shown facial recognition software misidentifies black, Native American and Asian faces 10 to 100 times more often than white faces. Or you'll have like, um, uh, like what, seat belts. Your seat belts are all designed for men. Mm. Because they never thought, like, you know, to test with like, you know, <laughs> female sized crash test dummies. Yeah, I remember there was a, like, I don't know if it was a petition or like people were going around saying we need to test more, we need to build female crash test dummies to test yeah. women in cars. And all these people are complaining like, why do you need this? Why is it important? It's because women are in cars and when they crash, women <laughs> die more than men because the seat belts are adjusted for a man's height. That's why some cars now have adjustable seat belt heights. So as well for like kids and stuff or men who aren't like, you know, the average height. Females in the front seat are 73% more likely than males to be injured in a crash, 17% more likely to die. Since the 1980s, the government crash tests that give out those five-star ratings have relied on smaller male dummies to represent females, even though women and girls are often more petite with less muscle mass. New high-tech female dummies have been available for years, but the government doesn't require them. And, you know, bringing it back to the spheres of technology, you have, um, do you remember the release of Windows 8, was it? Where it was like all the big cubes. Ugh. And everyone's like, these cubes suck, why are you doing what's with the cubes? And the answer for that is that everyone internally at Microsoft used touch screens. Because obviously they all got given free Surface Pros and all their screens and their, like, you know, internal work computers were like top of the line Microsoft touch screens. And it was built for touch screen. And because everyone internally was using touch screens, that's how they designed the OS. They don't think about us little people. <laughs> no, and it's the thing is that it sounds stupid, but if you think about it, it does make sense, doesn't it? It's just they didn't realise that not everybody is them. <laughs> what we're talking about not thinking about the little people, did you see that fucking quote that's been going around about that bank guy? It's like the, the owner of, or the manager or whatever of a bank saying, people just need to accept that they don't have any money, that they're all poor. <laughs> Like it's been so going around. head of bank, <laughs> yeah. which its only purpose is storing other people's money. Yeah, I, I can't like obviously. I, I guess if you want to look up the context for this, but it's been floating around for the past few days where somebody who is in a position, a high position in a bank, just said people need to get used to being poor, and like. How but, out of touch do you have to be? It's all right, a lot of far quad, calm down. That's the thing <laughs> that people you know, they get stuck in these bubbles, whether intentionally or not, and the same thing happened with Apple and Microsoft and all these other tech companies where they just, they, they become so homogenous that they don't realize that their experience is not the experience that their customer's going to have necessarily. And, you know, it's fun to talk about, you know, Apple releasing a phone that didn't work as a phone or a PC with 100% failure rate. But the thing worth noting is that for every single one of these failures, Apple does something that literally changes the market in its favor. Because do you remember the whole um, uh, kerfuffle about removing the headphone jack? Yeah. How much of like, a big deal that was? And like you had other companies that like, we're never removing the headphone jack. And then Apple started making like you know gangbuster sales on like AirPods and stuff like that. And Bluetooth technology progressed. And now no phone comes with a headphone jack. They got made fun of for that as well. And that's the, you know that design ethos. While yet it sometimes results in them making mistakes because they're one of the few companies willing to make those mistakes, when they pay off, they reap the benefits. And that's why they have such a massive market share, and it's why stuff like, you know, Bluetooth headphones, like Apple basically dominates the market, because they created it.
essentially. You know what really annoys me is like, because I've encountered this recently because I wanted <laughs> to buy a new uh, phone case yes. or phone. And it's just the amount of names and different types of models just for one phone. Because mine's like a Samsung Galaxy yep. A52S 5G. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why wouldn't do we have to have all these names? Yes. Wouldn't it be nice if it just went 1, 2, 3, 4, exactly. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? I mean, Carl encountered that when it comes to the cameras. Yeah, Give, I did. Giving Lucas the expensive camera because it had a, um, a smaller number, so Carl assumed it was... Yeah, we can uh, yeah. Yeah, we can tell that story. Like, what's the camera we film on? What's the number on our camera? Yeah, I, think, people I, think, know. I think it's $1,100, though. Uh, or 250 Yeah, so, so we're yeah. filming this on a Canon 250D, yeah? Yeah. And um, at the office, when we had the, um, uh, the office in Sheffield, we had this camera and we had the... Is it the 70D. Six, the 70D, yeah. yeah. yes. And when I was like dividing up all the stuff in the office, I said to Lucas, oh, well, you'll need a camera for recording in your house. We're recording remotely, right? And I looked and went, 70D, that must be the worst one. And there's probably people out there who know cameras who are like, head in their hand. <laughs> well, the important thing to know is like, I don't know cameras. And the fact that I don't meant I made that mistake. And obviously he's gonna give me that camera back next time he's in Sheffield, but yeah, it's exactly what you're talking about there. Like, you know, they do that expecting, like, you know, consumers who are into cameras to know what they're doing, but the average person on the street who isn't super into this one specific thing doesn't know that. I mean, we were looking it up, weren't we? And we even we were confused by mm. the number system. We like worked with cameras for like over ten years. Like we don't even know what's going on. Uh, are you aware of the two different uh, lens um, fittings as well? Yeah, I am, but I couldn't tell you what they are. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But the, the, the Canon range has two different types of lens fitting, oh, yeah. and I think the EFS fit onto yeah. certain cameras, but the EF only fit onto certain yeah. cameras. What's EOS? Exactly. <laughs> it is the point. So confusing yeah. even for us. And that's why Apple enjoys such a massive market share because their old design ethos of it just works. And I can speak to this because I have an Apple phone through the business. And when I got this phone, I had my old Apple phone, literally second one out of the box, it just turned on and went, hey, there's an iPhone nearby, do you want to transfer all your footage and all your stuff? I went, cool, yeah. Pressed a button, an hour later, this phone had everything on it, all my passwords, yeah. everything was safe. And you cannot overstate how valuable that is for people who either don't know much about technology or, like me, are really lazy and bad at technology. Yeah, he has a, Samsung has a similar thing where you download, it's like the transfer app. It's really yeah. You like that. put phones, your phones together and it does the same thing. Yeah. That, that's that's be... why my new phone has Flappy Bird on it. Yeah, but wouldn't you like if that just happened out of the box? And that's, you know, one of the things that Apple does, like, and you will get the people in the comments, I can hear them already, I can hear them screaming up. You, oh, but you can't customise like you know your ringtones or your screenshot, and you have to like jailbreak it to get to the stuff you want. But the thing to keep in mind, person saying that, is that you represent a very small minority of the customer base. But they, the, the weird things they seem to think that they're not. And like I've encountered this in real life when I got my first work phone. Like I just wanted a phone that takes nice photos and like you know has access to the internet for transferring footage. So you know you can't like change your ringtone. Do you? It's like when's the last time you ever had your phone it's not on silent? silent. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, you can't, you can't jailbreak and put Pokemon games on there. It's like, why would I want to fucking do that? It's a phone for work. I don't need that functionality. That's kind of weird to think, like, yeah, I've had my phone on silent for God knows how long. But I used to love, you know, when you had the old you yeah. know, Nokia bricks getting the polyphonic ringtones. Make like, your own and all that good stuff, yeah. Oh, yeah, the polyphonic ringtones. <laughs> oh, I remember uh, one of the first ones I actually paid for was the Ding Dong song oh. by Gunther. Do, 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 do. But that's the thing, yeah, and we're, you know, we're from the generation where we remember and nostalgic for stuff like that, but that's not what the market wants now, and I don't think, obviously, I know the comments are full of people memeing on Apple, but those things I mentioned of, like, for every mistake they make, they do, like, you know, one of them will pay off, and they will pay out in dividends. Yeah, before anyone starts going about how great Samsung phones are, there's that one that exploded. No, there was those two that exploded. Oh, oh there we go. <laughs> yeah, I will never ever forget that here with the Samsung, was it the Galaxy S8? It was, it was one in. of them, yeah. Yeah, and someone modded GTA 5 to turn the um, uh, the C4 into a Galaxy S8. <laughs> <laughs> and Samsung filed a copyright takedown notice. <laughs> And then there was the guy who got a plane disembarked for changing his wife, his Wi-Fi name to Galaxy S8. <laughs> <laughs> and he just, like, things like, news stories like that, like, just are so harmful to brands. I don't understand how they got away with that. Because then, during, like, a month after they got, like, all the phone malarkey, like, um, uh, died out, their, like, washing machines started catching on fire. Because it was something like Samsung's, like, proprietary batteries just caught on fire. 
George, good morning to you. ABC News has been working on this investigation for the past year. Now we're learning nearly 3 million washing machines in American homes right now could put you and your family at risk. I mean, I, we, we recently got a new TV, and I think it was like last end of last year. Mm -hmm. um, and that just randomly got a massive crack in it. So we've had to get oh. another TV like off the uh, marketplace and it's got a dead pixel and it's bugging me. Yeah, oh man, I will, I will never forget the story told by my ex-girlfriend. It sounded like the most, do you, do you know those moments where you're just like, you're, you can just, you're hearing it doing this. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine what it'd be like living it. She said like her boyfriend she had before me was obsessed with technology. And he like made him get this like special internet um, like deal so you could get like a deal on this massive TV and um, I got like some massive $4,000 television and it had a single dead pixel on it oh, no. and all he would do every time they watched a movie is bitch about the dead pixel and, he would, <laughs> and they couldn't watch movies unless it was a specific time of the day and they shut all the curtains and I was like wow he must have been really into film then so no not really because he would complain if the Pirate Bay rips he got said Blu-ray and weren't Blu-ray. And it's like, so he did all that and then stole the fucking movie. He was literally a choosing beggar. He was complaining about stuff he got. He bought a $4,000 television but couldn't buy the Blu-ray. I mean, I, I know that feeling when you're trying to find like footage or something on YouTube and you put yeah. HD and it's not HD. Yeah. Liars. I just always remember, but I just remember thinking like, I could not, imagine like sitting out and I want to watch like, you know, I don't know, fucking, a movie and it's like no we have to shut the we have to sit and we have to sit this one speak and you're not allowed to talk and then all you hear every 10 minutes like fucking pixel you just like you like that one you like we, we've started re-watching the boys and a lot of the scenes are quite dark so i keep just staring at this white dead pixel oh, that's rough. Like, no. and now i don't know where to go or how to end this because we we did the end of the article first and that's why we to get to the point it's important to provide a lot of context when you get to the point where, you know... We don't like structure, Carl. Yeah. We don't like structure. So when it talks about, you know, Steve Jobs destroying that iPod prototype, you know, that you understand it there. Like, yeah, because he wanted to make it smaller. And even if it was not, you know, the smartest decision, it has paid off in dividends for the company in the past. Yeah, yeah that's what he did. He just drowned it. Perfect. So we got that. Oh, so nearby Brad and Nisha, while we were doing this, Nisha kept randomly pulling out her phone and recording me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't have to do it now. What are you doing the, that? The meta-ness of her doing it while you're talking about it. Yeah, I should probably try and turn this camera around and you see my kitchen and you see all, like, the, the pots I've got not washed. Well, the reason you're doing that, Nisha, is because you're oh, actually... I was cool behind the scenes. Okay. I was going to say, the reason you're doing that, Nisha, is because we're starting to get more behind-the-scenes stuff for our Patreon and our social media, both of which you can find linked below. Yes. Yes. So, so, that's so like, professional. People like to see they do. Even if the behind the scenes stuff is just this footage from slightly further away. <laughs> the ultimate professionally unprofessional is the fact that every time you pan over to me, I'm just holding a fucking square with a light on it. Oh, and it's and it's flashing. I don't think we ever need to put ourselves down about the quality of our production when during the pandemic you had like Netflix did the Tiger King reunion with iPhones. And they got them on there, including like one of the guys who was in jail on his iPhone or something. <laughs> don't think we ever, like, and we did like, we've got you know, prosumer level stuff and we still managed to put out like, consistent high quality shit with decent sound and visual quality. When Netflix couldn't. Uh, decent sound. It's fine. Our first guest tonight is the host of the Emmy and Peabody winning last week tonight on HBO. Welcome back to the show, John Oliver, everybody. Hello. So far away, Lucas, what universe are we exploring today on this episode of Wiki Week Day Ends? <laughs> yeah, that's still knocking about somewhere, but yeah, if you to check out the behind the scenes footage of this and other videos, you can do so, and the links you can find below. That's a new mannerism, man. you, you do it all the time now, what? but the, 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 you wave the finger up. I'm motioning towards the camera, if people like that yeah, like direct connection. you ever thought about being a magician? No. It's not going to be like your little move. Finger go. Finger bang. bang! People like it. It's a salesman technique, isn't it? You make no direct uh, points. Also, it's a good way to edit as well. Like, you do that and you edit out. I thought you were say you can zoom in on the finger. You can if you want. Bang. Like the Luigi. The small wood finger. No, it's the Luigi when he wins in a, a match in Smash Bros. And he just goes, bang, bang. <laughs> and it's just the most pathetic noise is Luigi winning in Smash. Just, bang, bang. Oh, like, oh, Luigi. The winner is... Bang, bang. Luigi. 